Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to talk to you about everything that's happening in and around the city of Missoula. Uh, I got uh, a bunch of things. I got some videos and clips and a whole bunch of new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT this week, your week of January uh, 20. Uh, second, including some things from uh, yesterday that you can access online at MCAT.org. But let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. It is currently 32 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 41 degrees. Your low is going to be 27 tonight. Um, you have that rain snow mixture happening Thursday you have an 80% chance of snow that quickly decreased to about 20% so you'll probably see some snow Thursday maybe even some um, precipitation tonight as well Friday you have that 50% chances of snows um, Friday night 60 to 30% on the Saturday chance of snow so it looks like it's gonna be pretty good for the sk slopes for any of you who are going out skiing today um, for of course, here are some of the uh, recent reports of snowfall in some of these um, ski resorts in and around the this, uh, this state area and region. Big Sky Resort had 11 inches in the last 72 hours, and it's going to be partly cloudy out there as well. Uh, six inches at Whitefish Mountain Ski Resort. Uh, Blacktail Mountain Ski Area had three inches. Bridger Bowl didn't have any fresh new powder, but they had uh, three inches in the last 72 hours. Looks like everything is good. Montana Snow Bowl, um, they look like they have a good amount of snow on their slopes. So if you guys are planning on going out about this uh, week or maybe even this weekend you can see expect to see some snow happening throughout the time so after six years the city's plan to end homelessness is looking good in those last years we've seen the creation of the new Pavarella Center we've seen um, uh, housing that, that was created and a lot of organizations coming together to help people who are dealing with emergency housing and homelessness um, the cities in the second of three phases until 2019. The, this phase establishes a coordinated entry system which links all the groups together as one agency with one caseload. Phase three will focus on adjusting the coordinated system so it's sustainable in a long term um, because you know it's not it's it's the amount of housing that they have to provide the people who need the housing uh, so it's a plan to uh force uh, it's not a it's not necessarily a plan to force folks into homes and get rid of the homelessness but to look at it from a from many solutions as in trying to get people uh, a place uh, a roof over their head but at the same time giving them the opportunities that they need to move forward so pav was actually established as a sanctuary for those who are sober and looking for a little help to get back on their feet while well, some organizations have established a relationship, police training to help communicate with folks because uh, the biggest concern of people are the camps that are getting built in parks and near, near trails and under bridges. While well, coordinated entry is showing signs of decreasing chronic homelessness, homelessness in the area and deaths from being homeless uh, on the street, there are still significant barriers um, to what uh, Teresa Williams calls functional zero, which means uh, when more homeless people are being admitted to housing, than are on the streets, or even further to end the goal to make sure homelessness is rare, brief, and reoccurring. They had a panelist just last night of 10 people from, oh, actually they had a panelist last night with over 10 organizations throughout Missoula. Phase two is on track to end in 2019, which will move forward to phase three in terms of initiating um, sort uh, plans and figuring out ways to um, go through the many steps of homelessness. So. Um, Patience is what the, this 10-year plan uh, to end the homelessness is asking for, and there's many more resources than ever on the way to make sure homelessness is rare, brief, and non-reoccurring. MCAT filmed this uh, entire meeting last night, and all concerns of folks have, of course, um, will uh, have been asked, and it was a Q&A panel, and it was, a, uh, from what I hear, it was pretty good. Um, here are some things that are happening in the state. Um, Montana made national attention again when it comes to the um, uh, neo-Nazism coming down to our northern part of our state in Whitefish. So uh, this is it's been over a year since Whitefish uh, was targeted by a neo-Nazi group uh, based out of Ohio, which started a kind of a troll storm, a tw uh, like a online um, or uh, a, an online hate group, basically. Uh, um, rolled with it in a way because they heard a new story about uh, uh, a part-time um, resident of Whitefish who uh, had uh, Nazi nationalism um, kind of background in itself, uh, whose mother was buying property up in um, Whitefish. And 
uh, it made a news story up in Whitefish, and from there, people from Ohio jumped on it because the person, the realtor that was working with the mother of the neo-Nazi person. So it's, it's, it's a weird degree of separation, but the fact that the person was Jewish basically garnered attention from this hate group, and it kind of rolled out of control. So he called for a neo-Nazi march through a quiet ski resort. So, uh, of course, you must have heard just last year that they wanted an armed um, um, march throughout the city streets of, of, of Whitefish. But, of course, uh, police chief Bill Dahl, Dial advised the victim uh, victims file police reports, which were getting um, hate uh, speech towards them, other ways to go dark and not engage in the online trolling. There wasn't a whole lot that could be done at the moment, uh, the authority says, because uh, of, uh, let's see, let's go back to Anthony Anglin, the leader of this Ohio-based Nazi online group, um, and his trollers seemed to know just where the line was between free speech and credible threats of harm. Uh, the trolling eventually died down in January of last year as Anglin's plans, armed neo-Nazi march through the uh, snowy streets of Whitefish, never happened. Instead, uh, the town staged a large counter-rally denouncing the hate. Um, then, of course, the Charlottesville uh, attention happened, and it kind of took focus away from Whitefish altogether. So basically, this is a story is about a year old and uh, the kind of like the main point of this story um, what I'm trying to make is that uh, because this was a story um, w which garnered the attention of these groups um, this kind of like rehashing of the story kind of seems like they're kind of baiting uh, the new neo-nazism so I got the story from NPR and I'm kind of um, really kind of like uh, it, um, it kind of seems like it's going to be uh, kind of kind of blown out of proportion yet again. So just kind of thinking about that. Of course, um, moving on, uh, government shut down uh, over the last week because many folks could not agree on the DACA. Um, many of the uh, things that the uh, government is trying to do is dealing with deferred actions for childhood arrivals, given the choice between open borders, a position that literally zero uh, mainstream political leaders are even proposing, and a secure border, which is uh, the current U.S. policy. 90, 79% of Americans agreed that the U.S. needs secure borders. This was a Harvard poll, if you could believe that. Right now, both families and skill-based immigrant uh, immigration exists in the U.S. through far more about two-thirds is based on family ties, according to CAPS. Meanwhile, around 15% of missions to the country are related to job and skills. On top of that, there are diversity visas, uh, visas for uh, in, uh, investors who create jobs and allowances for refugees. The whole idea of immigration is difficult because Americans support on any given issue that can jump around over time, and depending upon when and how the questions are asked, the answers can be interrupted by any number of ways. But based on an array of uh, repeatable polling, here is a few uh, reasonable conclusions to draw. The problem with polls is that in a time where, where people are constantly bombarded with opinions from folks in news and talk shows like you see here, it's impossible to have an unbiased stance on the matter. If you want your, uh, you want your neighbors to have the same rights as you because you know, do unto others as you want others to do unto you, but the growing concept of national security and news and certain Twitter users saying one thing uh, to affect these such polls. So it's easy to uh, be afraid of uh, neighbors that you don't really know where they're from and know where they come from. So down to the brass tacks, these polls in America don't mind people who go through the proper channels to get their own green cards, but disagree with the fact that children or family members burn in this country just because they are related to members who have earned their place here. Long story short, immigration is something that should be available for those who want to earn it. Seems fair. Immigration solved. Anyways, <laughs> that's pretty much all the news. It's a lot of information and a lot of things going on there. You got NPR. I got it from some CNN um, channels as well, just around here and there. Um, but if you guys are interested, you guys can go look that up here yourself um, online and all around many different sources um, from all over what's going on here and that and more. So we got some new programs. I'm going to stop talking right here and I'm going to take a break. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about some city council stuff. So stay with me. They always cracked me up. They were, they were never animals I could never fully get used to. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think at the same time animals that I never really uh, got sick of either. You know, they're they're greedy. They're loving. They're they happy. They're I don't know. They're kind of everything that's I don't know. Everything that kind of is comical to me. It's all kind of summed up in one little happy animal. You know, in general, I've been painting ever since uh, you know, probably middle middle school and high school. You always do it kind of for uh, for fun assignments. 
uh, but I never really got into it until I think probably my last year of high school. And uh, I did my, my first oil painting and uh, it just, I think from there I just fell in love with it. look up, that same animal control guy, he's charging through the snow right to us. So, um, you know, I wanted to just point at May and say, it's her fault. But, you know, I knew that was wrong and useless. So, uh, I, I just felt so angry and and stupid and broke, <laughs> you know, that happy holiday feeling. And um, so, uh, you know, and that just hangs on through the whole weekend until I, you know, until Monday when I can get to court and find out just how broke. And it's a hundred bucks second offense. You know, this is a public service announcement for you guys, really. And here's one place where they're making the age use. And my gosh, if you have to dress up in a hazardous hazmat suit, you know, to make a product that you're selling to people to inhale into their lungs, I think there's something, something wrong. A teaspoon of the age use um, can kill a child. And like three teaspoons, they say, can, can kill an adult. And they do come in different levels of nicotine. They range from 32 to 24 to 18 to 12. And some have zero. There, there are people, you'll hear about them using these things to walk themselves down to get off cigarette smoking. And w we can talk about that a little bit later. I, I think that's a totally different thing. Um, we talked about is it harmless, is it safer? It's very likely that they're safer than cigarettes, um, but we don't know that for sure. And I personally would say anybody who can use these things to get off cigarettes, you're probably doing yourself a favor, but then you've got to get off of this. And those programs will be airing the next couple of days here on MCAT. I'll have some more programs for you to air this Friday, along with Flagship Friday as well. But let's kick things off with some city council. So the city of Missoula hosts a uh, weekly meeting about city council and city government. Uh, happens every Monday at 7 p.m. And w w some of the topics that were up for discussion is uh, the Missoula Senior Center. So here is uh, Susie Minigat uh, talking about that. Since moving here two years ago, we found that the center to be a, a great resource. This is a personal statement, though, of two different worlds. In my undergraduate years in a community of similar size to Missoula, I saw the lives of seniors when no senior centers or programs existed. I visited retirees living together in one-room cold water apartments, literally eating cat food. Seniors institutionalized in rest homes where they were treated not much better than the dogs in a shelter. And one senior in particular who told me that she had her meals with her friend Freddie. I found out later that Freddie was a fly that flew around her apartment. No one ever visited her except my classmates and I. And she eventually slipped into dementia. Years later in my professional life, I worked among an array of people from varying cultures. 
most of which were Alaska Natives and Hawaiians, who valued their seniors in an amazing and responsible manner. They seem to realize that seniors are beneficial to the entire community to the very end of their days. Those images have never left my mind. Now at age 74, I'm a senior. The world of community senior relationships that I would like to see and which I'm here to promote is more closely aligned with the latter view that I saw in Alaska and Hawaii. Missoula is a wonderful community with a strong sense of place the envy of many other cities. It has an amazing array of people offering a multitude of talents that make this city so very livable. Not surprisingly, some of those people are members of the senior centers. They are the ones who helped build Missoula. They have been where you are now. They are former mayors, carpenters, veterans, doctors, bankers, architects, concert pianists, teachers, nurses, lawyers, secretaries, and housewives. Some are like my husband and myself, transplant retirees, wanting to continue giving our knowledge, expertise, and volunteer in the community we have chosen to call home. And we are all now where you will all be someday. All right, so um, that was Susie Minigat, and uh, she talked about the senior. Of course, there are many senior programs, and of course, to speak your, support your seniors in Missoula, you can volunteer with Missoula Agent Services, Missoula Senior Center. They have a second-hand store. They're always looking for volunteers to do that. And swing by the senior center, even if you just want to play bridge around lunchtime. All right, moving on. Chief Mike Brady talks about some of the new police officers who have just completed a year in service. So here is Missoula City Chief Mike Brady. These are three of our officers uh, that have completed uh, the first year of service, the probationary year. They've completed um, the field training program, and uh, two of the officers were officers in other states, so they didn't have to go to the academy. Uh, one of them did go to the academy here, and we'll explain that. Um, they uh, have been working on their own now for at least six months and they've been doing an outstanding job for the Missoula community. Officer Rebecca Potton is from Montana. She moved away after high school. She has two adult children. One is attending the Air Force Academy in Colorado, and the other is attending college. She comes to us after spending 13 years with the Phoenix Police Department. She was an officer and a detective with that department. Officer Brian Gorman, on the end, comes to us after spending six years with Pacific Grove PD in California. His last assignment was on a gang and narcotic task force. He's also an instructor in standard field sobriety testing and firearms. Prior to his employment with the police, he was a U in the U.S. Army for 10 years as active duty and National Guard with a deployment to Afghanistan. And Officer Chris Proper, he's originally from Western New York State. He was a public school teacher in Fredonia, New York. He served in the U.S. Army from 2004 to 2011. He moved to Montana in 2013 and was working as a personal trainer here in Missoula before being hired. I am pleased to bring all three of these officers to you for confirmation as police officers at the city of Missoula. All right, so that was uh, Mike Brady. Um, and, of course, the city of Missoula confirmed um, of these police officers. So congratulations to these three. Um, Speaking of congratulations, here's Heather Harp, and she responds to these new um, folks. Taking the Citizens Law Enforcement Academy, which is something I don't know if all of you are aware of, but it's a service that our police department puts on every year, though last year they did not. And I'm joined by 40 other fellow Missoulians, and every week for nine weeks we get a little taste of what these uh, officers go through each and every day. So I want to thank you three for joining our force and making our city stronger. Thank you. Mr. All right, Bar so that was uh, Heather Harp. Um, now let's move on to our next topic, which is uh, We the People Amendment Day. Uh, the city of Missoula uh, uh, started this, which is a law that would prevent uh, corporations from getting the same rights as the people. So it's also one of those uh, um, laws that are, I mean, the other bills are kind of trying to get pushed through to basically saying that um, corporations are not people and they don't uh, deserve to have say in how the, we, uh, how the people create laws and so on and so forth. So here's uh, um, Sue Hitchmeyer and she talks about this a little bit. 
We're a nonpartisan organization, and what we are asking is not how we will decide issues, but the ability. We're, asked, we're trying to accomplish the ability to have a democratic debate again, and that's going to require strong journalism, our ability to protect our journalism, and our ability to protect our citizens so that they can have a voice. Um, presently, so much of our resources are being directed um, to, the, to the wealthy, with 99% of the new wealth going to 1%. 10% of um, the population at the top owns 77% of our wealth. The uh, bottom 40% um, is left with many of them with negative wealth, so they're, they're in debt. Um, so, so when you look at how the policies that we're, we're, we're following, you have to question whether we're really able to have a democratic debate in this situation. All right, so that was um, once again that was uh, Sue Hitchmeyer, and he um, talked about with the People Day, and it was a um, proclamation read by the mayor. Um, Julie Armstrong talks about Project Community Connect, which is formerly Project Homeless Connect, um, which will be happening this Friday at the Zoo uh, Zoo Town Art uh, Zoo Town uh, Zoo Town Church, just off of Brooks. Um. This particular event, which we're holding at the Zoo Town Church, is designed to provide critical services and hospitality to our most vulnerable community members who are at risk of becoming homeless. They are homeless, or they are people with disabilities. People who have served. Um, a lot of our veterans are, are homeless as well. So the local project Community Connect is part of a, the national movement, and it historically coincides with the Department of Housing and Urban Development Point in Time Survey. Um, right now we think we have about 500 chronically homeless, but the new count will tell us how many we do have, and that is a significant number for this community. Um, again, I will put the link up on my Facebook page if you want to come out and volunteer. We'd love to have you, and we'd love to educate you about about what you can do to help. All right, so um, that was Julie Armstrong, and of course uh, this event runs from uh, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. this Friday at Zootown Church, and they have shuttles um, for people who, oh, can't, who can't get there, and it's a way to basically connect with people who aren't necessarily homeless, but are also on the um, the the tightrope for uh, homelessness as well. So it's for people who may or may not become homeless. So it's not necessarily geared towards one thing. It's a community connect, and that's why they changed the name rather than it just being called Project Homeless Connect. So just letting you guys know. So that's happening this Friday, and it happens from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Zoo Town Church. So, um, Lisa and Rebecca from Missoula Housing Authority came into uh, Missoula Housing Authority came on Missoula Live to talk about this and more. Um, just on Monday, and will be airing on MCAT Channel 190 every day, um, pretty much uh, from four to five. But of course, you can reach it online by going to MCAT.org. Gwen Jones, uh, of course, clears the air on aquatic facilities that Jesse Ramos was skeptical of in terms of paying for. So here is um, Gwen Jones clarifying that. And at that meeting, Mr. Ramos had brought up uh, that he did not want to vote for the user group fee increases for the aquatics facilities, splash and currents because he thought it was a triple tax. So I was contacted by a couple of constituents who uh, wanted more information regarding this, so I thought it was probably important to take some time to explain in detail how our aquatics facilities are financed um, because it's actually a little bit more complicated. I think it's it's great to be asking questions, but I think really City Council has a huge uh, responsibility to correctly communicate information. So I wanted to take a few minutes and go through how our aquatics facilities, Splash and Currents, are are financed, how this all works. So first of all, in 2003, there was a general obligation bond that was voted on by this community, and this community decided it was a strong value that they wanted to create these facilities. So the general obligation bond voted on by the community uh, created the financing tool to build these facilities. Secondly, we charge user fees. So if someone wants to go to Currents or Splash Montana and swim and splash, they pay a fee to go in and use those. So the operation costs just a 
a huge amount of the operation costs and a huge amount of the maintenance costs are financed by the user fees. So I don't see that as a tax in any way. I see that as people who want that service pay for it. Um, and then finally, we have a couple of small funding components. First of all, we take a little over $200,000 from our general fund, and that goes towards the aquatics facilities. This historically has always been the way it's worked in Missoula back in 2000 when we had McCormick Pool and Spartan Pool long before we had Splash and Currents. The city of Missoula back then financed them from the general fund uh, to the tune of about $130,000, $135,000, and that was based on the policy that we wanted kids in Missoula to learn how to swim. We live in western Montana where there are rivers, lakes, and irrigation ditches. And every year children drown in Montana. So as a result, it's always been a strong city policy that we want to make this as inexpensive as possible to get kids in learning how to swim so that less children die in the water every year. So as a result, that is why our general fund puts a small portion towards these, um, towards, uh, supplementing these user fees so that we keep them low and then we also have some all right so that was um gwen jones explaining how uh, uh the city supports the um currents and many of the aquatics um centers here in the city of missoula so just letting that letting that just kind of sit there so if you uh, have a fixed income and are concerned about taxes and such uh, you can apply for a tax break if you fit under a certain category. Deadline to apply is March. So uh, with the new tax season coming up here, and not to mention a lot of people are concerned about tax heights, many people with actual fixed incomes can um, apply to this program for a tax break um, if you have a fixed income. Um, but of course, deadline to apply is in March. So you might want to get on that just before uh, taxes happen. Um, lots of things uh, happened, and uh, you can watch this by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website where you can find out everything in the city of Missoula. If you're interested in finding out more about MCAT, um, MCAT is a resource for everything Missoula, from our public access to our civic and educational. We talk about all these meetings. We show all meetings. We show lectures. We show uh, random programs, which I'm about to show you in a, in a bit. Um, so I made a dub and stuff, and it is a continuation of, of basically what I've been doing for the last uh, couple weeks here in 2018, and it's from Miami Connection, one of my favorite movies of all time. So I'm in a nice little dub and stuff of this movie, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula, so stay with me. All right, come at me with a knife. Huh, are you sure about that? Huh, yeah, yeah, whoa. Huh, huh. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, that was a good fall. You did very well for somebody who would fall very easily. Now take this knife and try again. All right, I'm ready for you. Huh, okay. Fighting. Huh. Fighting. Yeah. Whoa. You, uh, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Good old times. I remember like it happened yesterday. But it happened one hour ago. <laughs> How can you say something like that? I, I could swear that I remember it was like yesterday. It felt like it was forever ago, you know? Mm. You know I have this really good idea. How about you just stop talking for once? It's kind of annoying just to listen to your voice over and over again. Oh, you should talk. You're just a basic bro. Mm, yeah. All right. I agree with you on that one. But you have to admit that Listen to your voice is kind of getting old after a while, you know? Not as old as that attitude of yours. If I had half the voice that you had... <laughs> half the voice? What are you talking about? You don't make any sense whatsoever. How can you have half a voice, you know? You should be ashamed of yourself. Shouldn't be ashamed of myself, Sensei? What do you think? Oh, uh, you should not be ashamed of the way you talk. Being who you are, it's part of who you are. Your voice is part of who you are. You can't really have half a voice. What do you... That's ridiculous. I agree 100%. It goes against basic math. If I do the math right, I would half your voice, and I'd have all of my voice making a volume of 150%. John, you cannot have all that voice. You cannot always just add another person's voice to your voice. But what about digitally? Oh, please don't encourage him. 
So, can I have another voice, Sensei? Absolutely not. You cannot have another voice. Now will you just drop it? Sensei's orders. It is the strength of the spirit, not the strength of the voice. Whoa. What about spirit voice? Now you're sounding loco. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't speak Spanish, but I kind of see what you're going with this. If you had a spirit voice... <laughs> I can have a spirit voice? Well, not exactly. It's kind of like, um, you know, a voice that you put your spirit into. Kind of like when people sing and dance and have a good time. With the power of the spirit voice, you can pretty much do anything if you wanted to. <laughs> no, 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 Ricky. That is not true. The spirit voice is not any kind of power that you can oh, have. Oh, yeah, I get it. With proper training and exercise, we can pretty much do anything if we put our mind to it, after all. <laughs> oh, man, the kinds of things I would do with the spirit voice. No, you're not listening. You got to understand that there's no such thing. Well, at least there's still a Santa Claus, right? Looks like I'm going to be here for a while talking about things. How long will it take to explain to John things? Will Ricky be able to achieve the spirit voice? And how will John react to Santa is not real? Find out next time on Dub and Stuff Miami Connection. Hey guys, welcome back. Now, we're talking about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula. There's a lot happening, so I'll try to breeze through them. Roots, Mismo, and uh, Missoula in Indoor Sports Arena will be hosting all sorts of wonderful um, indoor uh, tumble and gymnastics for young kids who are walking to three years of age, all happening from 9 a.m. to 12. Uh, NAMI, Managing Your Life, a free weekly life skills group for adults living with mental illness. No registration is required. You can call them at 880 1013 for additional information. And this is at NAMI, Missoula. Tiny Tales is at Empower Place, which is at the Missoula Food Bank, starting at 10.30 a.m. this morning. Have your kids get um, familiar with books and learn to read and get familiar with the new uh, Missoula Food Bank. Legacy Planning, caring for your family and community. Missoula Public Library, um, a, a, in partnership with many other organizations with Missoula Aging Services and Missoula Community Foundation, are putting on Legacy Planning, which is happening at 10 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library. And it's basically about, about writing a will. And 70% of Montanans don't have a will. So it's a good way to uh, talk with somebody who knows about getting a will, getting things going, um, because if you don't um, write a will, then the government will uh, do the will for you. So think about it like that. So, um, of course, if you miss the one that's happening at 11 today, you can always have the one at 4 p.m. this afternoon, which means at the Missoula Senior Center. Uh, there's a two-hour class at Zootown Arts Community Center, and it's uh, as seen on, inspired by projects seen on the World Wide Web. Each two-hour class will focus on a project that are easy to make. So it's a DIY class, which they utilize YouTube to basically find a DIY uh, ability to uh, new to you techniques or eccentric materials, um, eclectic, eccentric, no, it's eccentric, that's what it says. Um, um, class attendants will be strongly encouraged to personalize their work and create something that is unique and meaningful to them, and that starts at noon today. Simply Fit is at the Downtown Dance Collective, starting at, um, for only $5 at 12:15, high intensity and 45 minute total body workout designed to strengthen and tone using a variety of challenging body weight movement exercises. Easy step to ebooks is going to happen at the Missoula Public Library starting at 12:30. This class is an introduction to uh, and overview of ebooks resources available available at the library. You can call them at 721 book to apply. Um, it happens from 12:30 to 1:30 p.m. and uh, again that number is 721-2665. Uh, Scrabble and Bridge, Missoula Senior Center. Um, if you guys are planning on going there to play some Scrabble or Bridge, you can do that at 12.30. So that happens today. Um, Android Basic for your smartphone. Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is teaching you all about Android. So you can check that out, and it's about usually about an hour class. Uh, Missoula School Writers Group is at 3.30 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. So it's improved some kids who are learning to write. Uh, well, pfft, I don't know learning to write, but improve their writing skills and just help them out uh, along with their writing abilities and stuff like that. So they can learn to write a lot better so that as they go into high school. They also have a teen writers group, which I'll talk about uh, again this Friday in events. Um, financial education class. Um, Homeward is a great resource for anybody who are first-time home buyers, and it teaches people how to uh, buy homes and not to get basically ripped off and fi find out better ways to be financially secure when it comes to buying a home and being able to uh, um, 
keep up with mortgage payments and all that stuff. Um, just so you guys know, every uh, f every Wednesday at five at five thirty here at MCAT, MCAT hosts um, uh, orientation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing it, but orientation happens every uh, every uh, Wednesday at 5:30. Anybody who wants to come down here and learn all about MCAT, it's a good stepping stone into television broadcast or launching your own YouTube channel. Who knew? Speaking of YouTube, you should subscribe to me on YouTube. It's Wake Up Missoula. It's so easy. Um, and we teach you all that stuff. Um, Global Public Health premieres tonight at the University of Montana um, at. 6.30 p.m. It's usually in the Gallagher Business Building. A Global Public Health Lecture Series features health professionals working to improve public health around the world, sharing their experiences and insight during the weekly spring semester. Um, usually it's open to the public, and they have a couple, uh, you know, like uh, un undergraduates and graduates um, who are required to go to these seminars to kind of learn about it. And I honestly think just I really like these things. Like global public health is such an interesting thing to learn about just how community health works in other uh, in, in other countries around the world, which are considered third world countries, and about how a lot of diseases are easily spread just because they don't have clean water. So that's just an interesting thing. So they're going to have some people from Ethiopia, Nigeria, and um, people f um, talking about some research they did in Shanghai and Hong Kong. So. All that and more. And there's also another agriculture and human health free community talk at the University of Montana Uri Lecture Hall uh, prior to Western Montana Grazing and Agriculture Conference. Um, international recognized grazing and behavior based management expert Fred Prevenza, uh, PhD, will give a free community talk on how crop and livestock rearing affects the health benefits those food is produce and all are welcome to attend it's going to be at the year lecture hall at 6 30 p.m and the global public health is going to be at the galgar business building usually in room one two three um it's easy as one two three and here is a nice little uh a psa that i've been showing everyone it's more like a commercial for a saturday drop-ins it's not really a psa so without further ado here's this and when i come back i'll talk to you guys more about the events that are happening for your thursday Hey guys, once again, um, our Saturday drop-ins happen every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. And it's $10 per kid, age 9 to 13-ish. Um, here's some things happening um, for your uh, Thursday. Uh, starting tomorrow morning, it is the Western Montana Grazing and Agriculture Conference. Uh, that lecture hall that's happening uh, tonight will be kicking off the uh, Western Montana Grazing and Agriculture, uh, Agriculture Conference starting at 8 a.m. at the Double Tree Hotel. This happens from Thursday through Friday, January 25th through the 26th. $50 early registration and $75 at the door. Its two event will feature numerous agricultural producers, natural resource professionals, and educators from across Montana. Speakers will present and host panel discussions on various sustainable profit-driven topics such as grazing management, soil health, and testing re resilience pollinators, um, livestock crop rearing, and human health, plus many more. So you can check that out. Happening at the Doubletree Hotel pretty much all the next couple days. So um, that's happening 
Um, using Windows 10, Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. Um, hey guys, are you confused with Microsoft as much as everybody else? Windows 10 is doing, uh, Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is doing a, a class about Windows 10 in the most recent version of Microsoft Windows operating system. It feels similar to older version, but includes a lot new features and improvements. Learn to manage multiple windows using a virtual desktop, customize your desktop, and start menu managing your accounts. Protect your computer with built-in security and maintenance. So learn all this and more. Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center starting tomorrow at 1 p.m. Make it and take it. Big Sky Branch. Uh, Big Sky Branch hosts a crafts and gifts um, creation, and uh, it's at Big Sky High School Library. It's at 2.30 p.m right after when school gets out, which is around uh, 2 o'clock. So where are the monarchs on your birthday? Monarch butterflies are very well known for the amazing multi-generational migration they they make to escape the cold during the winter time. Come visit um, the Missoula Insectarium, the Missoula Butterfly House, to learn about the these great migrations and where the monarchs are on your birthday every year. Stop in any time between 3 and 5 to learn more. Um, open figure drawing, Missoula Fine Arts Studio, uh, is a model will pose for two hours in the highly uh, quality dedicated to set up with easels and controlled light. The model will be nude, so it's 18 and up. This session is uninstructed but monitored. This means that no critiques are given or attendees are able to choose their technique, material, style, and method as long as they do not disrupt other classmates during this work. Um, 18 years of older, um, if you want more information, go to info at MissoulaFineArtStudio.com. REI, when you're in Glacier National Park, Glacier National Park is usually the kind of park people go to during the summer, but winter in Glacier National Park is a unique experience, and through most of the roads are closed, the recreation opportunities are abundant with um, um, uh, kind of like uh, cross country backdoor um, uh, backyard. I don't know backyard skiing. I'm trying to think of the right word for it, but it's like a um, um, mountain back mountain skiing, that kind of thing. So enjoy different kind of winter stuff. REI is hosting this with cross country skiing or snowboarding. Experience the structures that will take you a journey through this magical winter wonderland. Come along and be inspired to create your own best of Glacier National Park experience. Just be aware of that just. Just because the roads in the Glacier National Park, a lot of them are closed, doesn't mean that you gotta that the the roads leading up to Glacier National Park are any safer. Because um, I had uh, we had a producer here who's uh, who who told me a story about them going up to uh, Glacier National Park during February and getting stuck <laughs> with their car. And if a uh, you know a police officer wasn't around to help them, they would have froze to death. Just you know think about it, because you you guys are kind of uh, <laughs> you're uh, playing with ice um, if you guys are going to Glacier National Park not during the summer, just so you guys know. On Golden Pond, the University of Montana, um, this is a tale of family and how uh, and how they pull apart and then find each other again. It's a play that's happened in the University of Montana. Um, something deep and profound resonates through the events that unfold the American masterpiece, brilliant penned by Ernest Thompson. Show runs through January 20th through the um, Jan run 20 January 20 20th 25th through the 27th February 1st 3rd and it's all at 7 30 p.m. with matinees on the January 27th at 2 p.m. so it's kind of all over the place you can go to the University of Montana or you can go to grizzticks.com to find out more information about the on Golden Pond which will happen at 7 30 p.m. and also around the same time happening tonight is MCT is doing happy days which will be running this week and it will end its run on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Bear Bay Dance presents Stilled Life, number seven. University of Montana hosts San Francisco-based Jenny Stolberg and Lauren Simpson as part of their guest performance residency. Still, uh, Stolberg and Simpson share a language of movement where body meets art, life, and abstract head on. So get ready for some contemporary dance hosted inside the University of Montana. I believe it's the UM Par TV building, room 005, and you can pretty much walk past there and kind of see it's a big dance hall with a lot of mirrors and stuff like that, but they will be uh, putting some things there, and they'll be working with lighting, music, and all sorts of stuff. So expect some contemporary dance happening um, tomorrow night at 8 p.m., and this is going to be happening from January 25th through the 26th, and they're going to have a matinee on the 27th at 2 p.m. and another nightly show at 8 p.m., so... That's going to be happening those nights. Here are some of your late night events that are happening. If you guys like karaoke, Eagles Lodge is the place to be. Um, also, the Sunrise Saloon and Badlander as well. Um, tomorrow night, if you guys are going to be out and about, Monks is hosting that one guy. 
It's going to be a rock concert. Live jazz is going to be at the Plonk. Bob Wire and the Bob Wire Trio featuring Bob Wire. Whoo! It's going to be at the Sunrise Saloon at the... <laughs> so it's going to be country music. Um, Dead Hipster Dance Party is going to be at the Badlander Thursday night. That's weird because I haven't seen them in like a million years. So <laughs> we'll see how that works out. So... Um, <laughs> That's so mean. Um, but, you know, that that's back when I was a kid. I used to go to the Badlander thing on Thursdays all the time. And th then they stopped, and then it was uh, Atomic Dance Party shenan. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? Um, it's a dance party on Thursday night, you know. <laughs> But yeah, that about hey, oh well, I'm uh, I'm I'm out of time according to nobody and um thanks for joining me. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about MCAT and more, you can learn, go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resource for everything Missoula. If you're interested in coming down to our orientation, you can email us MCAT at MCAT.org to RSVP or you can call us at five four two six two two eight, otherwise known as five four two MCAT. But be sure to uh, find me on my website. You can Google me at Wake Up Missoula. You can find me on YouTube, find me on Facebook, and go on Twitter, all that and more to learn everything that you need to know about Wake Up Missoula. Or you can just ignore it completely. So uh, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph, and I'll, I'll see you guys Friday for the Flagship Friday video of the week. It is going to be featuring Hellgate High School because they just uh, premiered their Flagship program this week. So I'm excited to show it, and I hope you guys are excited to watch it as, as much as I am. I'm excited to show it. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and I hope you have a wonderful day.